I, mean, I completely agree with you that it's a disgrace that announcement of this importance was not yeah, first yeah, made yeah, to Parliament. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I look forward to the leak inquiry that you uh, mentioned as well. <laughs> um, may I take this opportunity to congratulate the Secretary of State for coming top of the teacher's pet list? She was the first Cabinet Minister to tweet support for the Prime Minister. She was the first to volunteer to uh, do a broadcast round. And now she's been the first to throw up a distraction and in finding someone else to blame for the Prime Minister's disintegrating leadership. The BBC is reporting, of course. The licence fee deal must be fair to fee payers, whilst ensuring the BBC can do what it does best. There should be no blank cheques. However, the government claims this is all about the cost of living crisis. I mean, pull the other one. What is it about the £13.57p a month that marks it out for such immediate and special attention to address the cost of living over the £1,200 a year increase in energy and household bills or the £3,000 a year taxes increases that her government has imposed? Is the licence fee really at the heart of the cost of living crisis? Of not. No. Or is this really no, 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 no. about their long standing vendetta against the BBC? Yeah. 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 Now it's part of Operation Red Meat to save the Prime Minister from becoming dead meat. <laughs> Apparently, negotiations with the BBC hadn't even been finalised when the Culture Secretary gave the details to the Sunday newspaper on the very weekend the Prime Minister's position was most in peril. I leave it to you and others, Mr Speaker, to judge the timing of that. She has proven today the Conservatives may know the price of the licence fee, but not its value. Yeah. Yeah. The last time they targeted it, the over 75s paid the price. Exactly. So what assessment yeah. has she made of the impact of this two-year freeze on BBC output and commissioning? and on the wider creative industries more broadly. Is she happy to become the Secretary of State for repeats? <laughs> but this isn't enough. Oh, there's more coming, there's more coming. We've got lots of fun to be had with this, don't worry. But this isn't enough red meat for the Culture Secretary. She won't stop until her cultural vandalism has destroyed everything that's great about Britain. Vandalism is exactly what it is to tweet on a Sunday yeah. with no notice, no discussion or thought, yeah. the end to the unique funding of the BBC altogether yeah. without any clue as to what will replace it. So perhaps she will explain how the BBC will continue valued services that just wouldn't be commercially viable. First, how can it continue to support local journalism where so many have recently failed. In many areas, the BBC is the last local news desk standing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Second, how would a commercial-only BBC be able to play such a crucial role as it has done to levelling up and growing the creative industries across our regions and nations, yeah, from Cardiff to Salford and elsewhere? Exactly. The silence on that one. I support the increased funding for S4C, but they claim to support the union. So what assurance can she provide for the continuation of distinct broadcasting in Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland yeah, yeah. when there's no licence fee? Third, would her cutback BBC be able to continue with the World Service and its global soft power, which, this, which her government's review only last year described as the most trusted broadcaster worldwide? Would it? Finally, what would happen to BBC Learning, Bite Size and Children's Educational Programming, which frankly did a much better job than the Government did of getting high quality education into children's homes during lockdown when they couldn't even provide an iPad? The impartiality of the BBC is crucial to trust in it. By explicitly linking the Charter renewal to the BBC's editor... Quite rightly, I wanted to the Secretary of State in silence. I expect the same respect to be given to the Shadow Secretary of State. And those voices that I keep hearing, I know who's behind the mask, so let me reassure you. 
that if you want to go out early, don't let me help you on your way. Lucy Powell. I actually know that the Honourable Member is a big fan of mine, but he's just trying to hide it behind his mask secretly. Yeah. Yeah. The impartiality of the BBC is crucial to trust in it. By explicitly linking the charter renewal to the BBC's editorial decisions, the government sounds more like a tin pot dictatorship than a healthy democracy. The BBC creates great quality British produced programming, from royal weddings to strictly come dancing to great British drama and championing of new music. It's at the cutting edge of harnessing the digital age. Of course, it needs to change with the times and review its output and reach, but it is a well loved, trusted British treasure. It is the envy of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the government is in trouble, Mr Speaker. The Prime Minister is casting around for people to blame and the Culture Secretary has stepped up to provide some red meat. Well, it won't work. This is not how the future of our jewel in the crown and the cornerstone of our world-leading creative industries should be determined. She will have a fight on her hands yeah, yeah. if she wants to destroy it.